In this video, we'll take a quick look at the menu options in the Pro 160 and how to set them up. To make it easier to show, we'll use the optional display adapter board. To access the menu, press and hold select and switch the Pro 160 on. In the first level of the menu, you can set, edit, save and quit. The first option you have is to set the profile. A profile holds all the information about the performance characteristics, input settings, current limiting and low voltage behaviour etc. The Pro 160 has 15 profiles. The first one is factory set and can't be altered. Profiles 2 to 9 have names and values that are good starting points for the most popular applications. Profiles 2 to 15 can be edited as required and stored in the memory. With set profile showing, press select and then use the up and down buttons to select the profile required. Once you have the number you want, press select. Now we need to go to edit the profile. We'll press select and now we can see that the, the parameters are arranged into five groups. Forward settings, reverse settings, general settings, input configuration and advanced. You can step through the groups using the up and down buttons. Let's take a look at the forward settings group. With forward settings showing, press select and you will now be able to cycle through the forward acceleration ramp, the deceleration ramp, the maximum PWM level and the regen current limit. To adjust the forward acceleration ramp, ramp time Press select. You will see a number between 1 and 300. This is the time it takes for the controller to go from 0 to full speed, measured in 1 tenth of a second. So 5 equals half a second. Use the up down button to set the time that you want, and then use the select button to capture the new value and move back to the group level. The deceleration ramp is the time it takes for the controller to ramp down from full speed to zero after the throttle is closed. Again, we can change this using the up and down buttons and capture the value with the select key. The maximum PWM level sets the maximum output that the controller is allowed to give. A setting of 50% means that with a 24 volt battery, the maximum output from the controller will be 12 volts. The regen limit sets the maximum regenerative braking current that the controller will allow to occur. The default setting is close to the maximum current that the controller is rated for. This gives the maximum braking force when the throttle is closed. If this value is reduced to 1, then minimum regen braking will occur. Once all the forward settings have been set, use the back button to move back to the group level. The reverse settings group is the same as the forward settings group, but for the opposite direction. This means that you can have very different behaviour between forward and reverse. Now let's take a look at the general settings group. In here, you can set a maximum current limit This can be anything up to the maximum current that the controller is rated for. You can also turn the reverse beep on and off. This is where the low battery behaviour can be set. First, press select and you can now set the voltage at which the low battery warning is given. When the battery voltage falls to this level, the Pro 160 will reduce its maximum PWM level by 50%. You can also adjust the cutoff level. When the battery falls to this voltage, the Pro 160 will shut down. These voltages are measured in tenths of a volt and are accurate to about a tenth of a volt as well. If you want to use this feature with lithium polymer batteries, it's a good idea to calibrate these values. The parking brake settings are also in the general settings group. 
Here you can set the time delay before the parking brake is applied. And you can also set the PWM threshold that much must be reached before the parking brake is released. The last item in the general settings group is the alternate profile. This is a really useful setting that can be used in conjunction with the Alt P input in the Pro 160 to quickly switch between two different profiles without having to use the programmer. For example, the alter alternate profile for profile 2 is profile 3. So if the Alt P input is connected to ground, the controller will change from profile 2 to profile 3 the next time it is started up. Now let's move on to the next group in the menu, which is the input configuration group. Item 1 in this group is the input mode. Here you can choose between hot, radio control or voltage input. Item 2 allows you to turn joystick mode on or off. Item 3 is the controller deadband. This is the amount of input that is required before the controller starts its output. Item 4 is the pot learn function. This is where you can teach the Pro 160 the three pot positions at which zero speed, full ahead and full reverse speed occur. To use this function, press select and active and set active to show yes. Now select learn zero. At this point the display will show a number and this number will vary as the pot is rotated. Set the pot to the point you wish to have a zero and press select to capture this value. Now now press learn max forward and set the pot at the point you wish to have as the full speed point. Again press select to capture this, this value. Don't forget to also set learn max reverse. In single end of mode this will be the same as learn max forward. RC Learn works in the same way as Pot Learn, but uses the RC input as the source for learning. If you're using a voltage input, use Pot Learn to set the required values. Item 7 in the input configuration group is the lockout level. High pot lockout prevents the Pro 160 from giving an output if it is switched on with the throttle not at zero. This operates across all inputs and modes, and this setting defines the throttle percentage above which lockout occurs. Lockout is disabled in Volt mode. Once you've finished editing the, the, the profile, you now need to save the changes. So navigate to Save Changes, press Select. The control will save the changes to memory and will then start up. That's it, you're ready to go.